Wilt's the guy who has got hair, I'm the one who hasn't. Wilt is not terribly well and called off uh, doing this slot last week. So um, best wishes to you, Will, if you are watching this, because uh, as I said, it is being streamed, or some of it was, but certainly the last set was. So best wishes to Will for getting better. Hope to see you again next year. Right, second set this afternoon. Uh, the first one was astonishing. This will be equally so. This is a man who is currently celebrating 25 years. 25 years in the business, during which time his reputation has just gone higher and higher. He has a new CD out currently. He too will be available at the end of the set in the little tent. You don't have to go right to the far side of the site. It is just outside the back door. And you will be able to take home a slice of the John McCusker Band. Hello. Hello. We're delighted to be here. Uh, we've just arrived today, came down from Scotland, and uh, we brought the weather with us. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, we've, uh, I've got a big gang with me today. I'm delighted to be joined by brilliant pals and guests. And uh, we, uh, we've all been touring most of the year with different bands and different guises and with different folk uh, all over the UK, all over Europe, all over the world, really. And, uh, but we had a little chat today in the van on the way down and we decided that all those concerts have just been warm-ups for Shrewsbury Folk Festival. <laughs> so we're delighted to be here. I'm going to start with a few tunes. Uh, I've got a new record called Hello Goodbye and this is uh, the big opening track and it's called Calendar Boys.
very much. Thank you. Cheers, thanks very much. Well, sadly we've run out of time. Uh, <laughs> but you've had a nice afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. That was a few tunes, uh, like I said, from a brand new record. And I wrote uh, the whole record while I was on tour last year. I was on tour for about six months, traveling all over the place. And I found myself with more time on my hands than I've ever had in my life before, really walking around cities all over the place. And uh, I started writing the tunes and singing the melodies into my mobile phone. And that's how I wrote the whole album. And when I came to name uh, the titles of the tunes, I started thinking about those trips, and also trips really over the last 25 years, uh, that we have to make to go to work, or the chances we get to go to these amazing places. And I was thinking about one in particular, which was uh, a trip I made with Eddie Reader. Are you aware of Eddie Reader? <laughs> the amazing Eddie. Uh, for those of you who don't, she's a great pal and an amazing singer from Scotland. And we were in Japan a few years ago, and I was uh, on tour with Eddie over there. And we were about to play in this big theatre in the, in the middle of Tokyo. And we were, it was two minutes till showtime. And Eddie came into the dressing room. And uh, I said to myself and the rest of the lads, uh, I've got this brand new idea for the beginning of the show. And we're like, OK, well, what is it? And she said, you all go on and start strumming the very first chord to the very first song in total darkness. All the stage lights will be down, all the house lights will be down, everything will be in total darkness. I'll come on about 30 seconds later and all the lights will go and I'm gonna do that and it's gonna be amazing, start singing. We're like, okay. We went on and started strumming the very first chord and Eddie came through a door at the side of the stage that she thought was to the side of the stage, but sadly, it, she went through a door into a shopping mall. <laughs> which closed behind her, and uh, <laughs> she couldn't get back in. So uh, she had to go through the very front of the mall and round the side of the building, and then came on stage 10 minutes later. We were still strumming away in darkness, so it was the worst start to a gig possibly ever. Uh, so that's called Eddie's Trip to the Mall, uh, and then we finish with a, a tune called Frank's Reel. Uh, I'd like to introduce a couple of very special guests. We're delighted they're here with us today. Uh, the first one is, would you please welcome Heidi Talbot to the stage for the same song. Hello. And our second, we're delighted our pals come to join us today. This is his very first time to Shrewsbury Festival. He's my favorite guitar player in the whole world. Would you please welcome Mr. Graham Coxon. song that myself and John wrote um, and it's called Will You Remember Me? He's picked a rose from the old garden wall Will you Kisses her forehead, holds on to her heart. Rings in the sun, sound she understands. Will you remember me? I hear a sound that she sang just for me. I see. Will you remember 
Welcome all the way from Scotland, it's my name, Oscar. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll continue with a few tunes now. These are another couple of uh, new things from the new record. The first one. I wrote for our Molly's six, and I wrote it for our youngest daughter, and she's called Jessica, she's only one and a half. And uh, I wrote it after she was born, and it's called It's a Girl. And then we'll play you a, a new tune I wrote with a great friend of ours called Ian Carr. Are you aware of Ian? He's played with people for years and years, over the years. Uh, we were in the town of Cockermouth, uh, up in the north of England, it's a beautiful little place. And we were on tour with Heidi, myself and Ian, and we were just backstage in the little theater just about to go on and uh, we were a bit bored. Uh, so we started playing some music and uh, we wrote a little tune and uh, we wrote this melody and we went on to start the gig in Cockermouth and we said to the lovely folks, we've just written this little melody backstage and we'd like to start the gig and play it for you. And because we've written it in your beautiful little town, we'd like to name it after the place. So this is a brand new tune called Cockermouth. And uh, the audience, they were absolutely delighted with that idea. But to be honest with you, we, we were never going to call it that. We lied <laughs> to the people <laughs> of Cockermouth. And, uh, and looking back, it was a tad insincere telling the lovely folks that that's what we were going to call it. So we've changed the name. And it's a brand new tune called Shrewsbury. <laughs> so you're welcome. So that's that for you tonight. Uh, and then we'll finish off with a couple of other tunes. My friend Toby here told me this great story. We were on tour uh, the whole of April and May, and he went out for something to eat, and he went into the restaurant chain Nando's and having his dinner, and this, this guy stood up and silenced the whole of the restaurant and said he had an announcement. And he went down on one knee and proposed to his girlfriend in Nando's. He uh, said, will you marry me? And the girl said, we have to talk. <laughs> Maybe your worst nightmare. So, so that's that. Well, you were saying it was the worst night of your life, wasn't it, Ennis?
Thank you. We're going to do um, a song. This is a, a song um, that we've been doing for a few years, and uh, it's about a shepherd who is watching his sheep one night and he falls asleep. And when he wakes up, he sees a beautiful woman swimming naked in a stream. Woohoo! No? <laughs> not in Shrewsbury. Nothing, nothing different about that. So, where I'm from, that would be a big deal. But So, he sees this woman swimming naked and uh, he goes over and gets a good look at her and then makes himself known and says, uh, There's better things for you to be doing than swimming naked. You should be at home having babies and making food and stuff. So, she gets a bit of a fright and she says to him, Well, if you leave me alone and you leave my clothes alone, I'll give you loads of money. And the shepherd says, your clothes are safe enough, but when you get out of the water, we're going to go and get married. Because I've seen you naked, and that's what happens in Ireland. If you see someone naked, you have to get married to them. That's what happened to me and John. He was skinny dipping in the Clyde. And it happened along. Um, so anyway. Um, so she says, fine, we can get married, that's fine. But before we do, can we tell my father? And the shepherd says, yeah. So they go off to see her father. And uh, when they get to his house, she runs inside and locks the door and shouts out the window to the shepherd, you can feck off back to your sheep and not get married to you. <laughs> exactly. Yay. Yeah. So fair enough. So this is uh, the shepherd lad. We, uh, myself and Heidi were on tour a few years ago with Boo Hewardine, a good friend of ours, uh, in Ireland, touring around the place in Ireland. And we played in this tiny, tiny little place in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the closest place was Wexford, but it was in the middle of the country. And uh, the bar was so small that we were playing in that the very, very edge of the actual bar came to the, right to the edge of the stage. And beside me, um, the whole night right there, was a, a very old man wearing a flat cap, just staring at me, not saying anything, until Heidi came to talk about the song, The Shepherd Lad, and she came to the bit that says, and he sees her swimming naked in the stream, and all I heard beside me was this very quiet voice saying, ah, lovely. <laughs> naked people are lovely. With my dad. <laughs> Once there was a shepherd lad kept sheep upon the hill And he's laying his pipe at his cooker's side and there he slept as well He woke up on a river bank on a fine May morning And there he spied a lady swimming in the clothes that she was born in So he raised his head from his green bed and he approached me on your clothes, my dear, he said, and do not be afraid. It's fit to fall, the lady fair to sow with something to sing. Then to rise on a fine May morn and not to swim against the stream. Well, if you will not touch my mantle and you leave my clothes alone, then I'll give you all the money, sir, that you can get me. Sister 
continue with a little waltz that I wrote many, many years ago. So when I was 17, I left school to join my very first band, and they're called the Battlefield Band. They're still going after so many years. And uh, I'd never really traveled anywhere up until joining that band. I'd been in Ireland a few times on holiday where my mum comes from, but never abroad. And the, uh, one of the very first trips I got to make with the Battlefield Band was a tour of America and Canada for a couple of months. And we went to this place called Friday Harbor, which is in the west coast of America, just up the very top of the west coast. And it's certainly at the time, it was the most beautiful place that I'd ever seen in my entire life. And as I was leaving to go home on the ferry one day, I wrote this little tune. I was sad to say goodbye to the folks there and the beautiful place. So I wrote this tune on the boat and I called it Leaving Friday Harbor.
Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, could you cut my fiddle front of house? I've just got a little problem. Ennis is going to talk to you for a minute. He's got no idea what he's going to say, but he's going yeah. to talk to you. This is the first time I've ever spoken on stage at Shrewsbury Folk Festival. Um, usually Tober, Toby is better track, so I don't know why John picked me. But um, yeah, back to that Nando's story, maybe. Maybe? No? Well, you were there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't believe they're telling that story on stage. It's really bad. Um, yeah. Uh, Who's having a good weekend then? <laughs> that's good, yeah, that's good. Me too. Uh, I think Toby is as well. John's a bit stressed at the moment. But okay. Is he good? Is he good? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Pretty good. Uh, just this is a, actually, this is a very, very special afternoon for Ennis White here because this is his very, very last concert with a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Start and end strong. <laughs> yeah, can I just check that you've got the fiddle okay? Yeah. We can continue. Uh, this is a few tunes. Uh, we'll start with uh, a tune called We Michaels March.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Well, we couldn't have him here with us and not ask him to sing my song, sing your song. So would you please welcome back the fantastic Mr. Graham Coxon to sing your song. Thank you. Thank you. song I think that uh, Shirley Collins' mother used to sing to her and um, we're going to sort of I really know what to say about it. I sang it as a uh, folk award to you, didn't I, yep. John? And, and I gave her an award at the same time. And it's very nervous. One morning in the month of May When all the birds were singing I saw a lovely lady stray Across the fields at break of day continue with uh, another few tunes. These are, uh, the first one is a tune that I wrote quite recently for the new record. And uh, every year I get to be part of a thing called the Transatlantic Sessions. Are you aware of the Transatlantic <laughs> Sessions? It's a really brilliant thing. It was uh, an idea, quite a simple idea, uh, 20 years ago by our friend Ali Bain, the great Shetland fiddler. And the idea was just to invite his friends over from America and Canada, people that played country music or Appalachian music or Zydeco music and, and mix them up with the likes of ourselves or at that time, the, the most incredible people. Jerry Douglas would come over and play with Phil and Ali or people from Iron, Paul Brady, all kinds of different folk. And it's grown arms and legs and turned into this kind of transatlantic monster over the last 20 years where they now make brilliant TV programs and we tour every year and every, it's great for us because all us musicians, all we're trying to all really do is keep what we do 
as fresh and exciting as we can, not just for lovely folks to come see us play or buy records, but for ourselves. And something like the Transatlantic Sessions is like a dream gig where every single year somebody comes along and completely knocks your socks off. This year there was a girl called Rhiannon Giddens. Are you aware of Rhiannon Giddens? <laughs> a force of nature. And there was two fellas uh, called the Milk Carton Kids. Yeah. Um, for those of you that aren't aware of maybe the Milk Carton Kids, they're two fantastic guys from America. And uh, I suppose the best comparison is maybe the Everly Brothers or Gillian Welsh and David Rollins, where they sing around one microphone and don't plug the guitars and everything is just so intimate. and. I swear, it's like they completely blew me away every single night. It's one of the most inspiring things I've ever seen. And uh, so much so that after the tour, we became great pals. And after the tour, I went away and wrote them a little tune. So I wrote this tune that I'm going to play, and it's called The Milk Carton Kids. And I sent it to them a few months ago, and I've still not heard anything back. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I'll call it after somebody else next year. Uh, I'm only joking. Uh, so that's The Milk Carton Kids, and then we'll play you a couple of tunes from a project that myself and Graham were involved in nearly 10 years ago called Under One Sky. And uh, the idea was I was asked to put together 12 musicians, six from England and six from Scotland, to celebrate two British folk festivals, Cambridge and the uh, brilliant Celtic Connections up in Glasgow, and involve people that were playing them. So not just people like, you know, John Tams was there, Andy Cutting, great High Highland Piper, Ian MacDonald and Julie Fowles, but also people like Graham who would play at those festivals and Roddy Wimble from Out of Work. So we, they locked us in a room for a few days and we had to write this suite of folk music. So we'll play you uh, a couple of tunes from that. So that's Under One Sky.
Thank you so much. We're having a brilliant time playing for you. Uh, one of the most exciting things I've seen over the last 25 years of watching the explosion of the folk scene, but in particular, the amount of young people playing it. And I think there's three incredible examples of that. Up on stage with me, would you please say a big Shrewsby hello to Patrick Morrison, Toby Shear, and Innes White over there on the guitar. <laughs>
And Heidi Tolbert, everybody, please say it. Thank you so much. We've had a brilliant afternoon playing for you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, we've got some CDs up the very back there, so I'll come and say hello if you fancy coming and saying hello. And uh, it's just up the very back of the tent. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Thanks very much. Please say a big thank you to all my pals who are joining me for this afternoon. <laughs> We've just got two more minutes left, so we're going to play a quick couple of tunes. So feel free to clap your hands or shout, Hew! or if you fancy a little dance, we would totally love that. So thank you very much. We'll see you later on.
Thank you all to everybody at Shrewsbury Festival. Enjoy your day, thank you so much. It's a job of Ladies and gentlemen, the John McCusker Band and friends and relatives just gets better. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. They are going down the back to sell CDs, sign CDs, do all sorts of things. Now, we have got a half hour turnaround before the next band, um, but can I just make an announcement? In that dead spot, um, when the main stage is closed down, at 5.45 today, there is a dance display, it's a very special one, brand new, in the dance tent, so you'll get a chance to get a bite to eat, get a drink, get yourselves down to the dance tent, it's a Polish dance display, I'm told it's a bit of a crack off. Okay, I try. Um, full costumes, musicians, regional dances from all over Poland, it's gonna be really good, so that's quarter to six down in the dance tent when we've finished here. But we will see you back here in a very few minutes, thank you.